Good morning to you. Before getting started, I want to apologize a little bit for the lighting issues. I'm having to do this early in the morning. We live in the midst of 200 children that come to school and it gets very noisy and we're being a little bit challenged in finding time and place uh, to do these. But there is a uh, quiet at this hour of the day. It is about 6 a.m. here in Zambia, but I really had a burden to put this out. Uh, so I hope that the Lord will bless this to you. In one follow-up study of 294,000 decisions for Christ, one year after their conversion, some 280,000 weren't in a Christian fellowship of any kind. That means only 5% of those decisions were showing this outward sign of a true conversion. And we know that no such study like this is perfect, but it does give us the idea that something's wrong. Jesus did testify that the way of salvation was narrow and only few would find it. But when witnessing for the salvation of others, we want them to have a good foundation for their spiritual lives to be built upon. In 1 Timothy 1.15, the Apostle Paul said, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, worthy of all of being accepted, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Frankly, each of us ought to see himself in a similar light if we want to find a lasting salvation. Only too often today, evangelism tries to build up the self-esteem of those that they are trying to reach out to, and many use flattering words, like how God loves you, he has a wonderful plan for your life, some say you have a destiny to fulfill, things like that. But Jesus said that there is done good, none good but one that is God, and that he hasn't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. In other words, there are none who are good or righteous, and unless we see the disease of sin within us that separates us from God, we won't be able to receive the cure for our disease, which is the finished work of Jesus' death on the cross for our sins. It's our natural tendency to try and comfort people, to make them feel better. But to realize our natural state of sin before a holy God will make people feel uncomfortable. And this feeling is right, but we shouldn't seek to make it go away until they become reconciled to God the Father through Jesus Christ. And so in witnessing to the lost, or even those who have been superficially converted, we should try to make them aware of their sinful state a condition we obviously would share apart from the merciful redemption that God has shown to us. But to show them this, we can use the Ten Commandments to point out sins almost everyone will acknowledge to be bad practices. Remember that it is common for most people to consider themselves to be good, or at least not so bad as to deserve hell. Now there are two links below in the description I'd like to suggest. One is called Hell's Best Kept Secret, and it deals with false conversions. It's 38 minutes long, but I suggest that you watch it as soon as time will allow you to. The second is titled, Our Very First Witnessing Video, and it gives a sample of the type of witnessing I'm suggesting now, and it's less than five minutes long. So please consider these suggestions for sharing the gospel, for eternity is at stake. More samples of this witnessing approach can be found on the YouTube channels of Living Waters, and Ray Comfort, Just Witnessing. I hope this video has been a help in your Christian walk with Christ. Also look in the description below for a few helpful scriptures that tell us the true state of where we are with God and our real need for a Savior. May God bless you today.